My name's Bridget Gallagher and I'm a, a member of the Glasgow Disability Alliance and I'm really concerned about the level of benefit cuts. I do a lot of um, charity work and if these cuts go ahead it means I could end up being isolated, sitting in the house looking at four walls, which would then transpire that my health may break down and I would be going to the doctors because I'm depressed. And I'm also, I would like to speak on behalf of other disabled people in languishing in home cares who don't have a voice. I'd like to speak for them as well. The only thing that hasn't been addressed as far as I'm concerned is the trillions of money that's sitting in offshore accounts and Swiss bank accounts by the 10% of the richest people in Britain. For the likes of Philip Green, who has put all his assets in his wife's name, why is, why is nothing done with regards to that? Less than 1% of all that money, we wouldn't be sitting here discussing benefit cuts. My name is Linda Case and I live in the east end of Glasgow and I'm really, really so unimpressed with all of the government cuts that are impending. And it's just like we literally don't know what to do because it's uh, like we live on little enough the way it is being disabled and unfortunately relying on benefit. I've never my life intended to this week, my whole life. Well, my whole independence is I have achieved being because I wasn't always disabled. But, I mean, I've achieved so much independence since then, and I love it through DLA support, for example. I was just gonna say something about housing cuts as well, because the housing is certainly a major issue that when you're almost already living on next to nothing, that you know your whole, your whole home's at risk. And then that's gonna cost more money, I suppose from somebody. I'm pleased that today's conference has happened because we can we can all find a way to bend together. And it'd be so much more because instead of all of us fretting at home, looking out the window and what our lives are going to be so miserable, which they are going to be, but so good to see so many other people share the pain in a way, but it's also like fighting for um, our basic human rights, really. Well, I think the government um, for instance, has taken the approach of the big society. And previously, in about the 1980s, Margaret Thatcher stood up at the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland and said there was no such thing as a society. So I think David, David uh, Cameron has sort of caught on to the big society thing. But I think that uh, big society, yes, and we're all responsible, and we're all stakeholders, but in reality, how can we be stakeholders if we are not allowed to be empowered? We're going to be taking the, the very means of our empowerment away, the cuts. And I, I think it's very sad that because uh, people with disabilities or d disabled people have worked hard to become responsible citizens. And if they do that, I think it's extremely sad if they cut benefits like uh, the, the, the DLA, which uh, makes things easier for people in the, in the mobility and in the, the personal care uh, process. Day by day, uh, certain newspapers uh, publish lies regarding disability benefits, um, calling people who are disabled scroungers and uh, and uh, and the reason, the catalyst for starting the campaign was the death of Paul Rieke, who is a well-known writer uh, of Acid House fame, a contemporary of Irvin Welsh. Uh, Paul was very unwell, uh, went for a, um, an assessment uh, with Atos Limited, who work for the Department of Work and Pensions, a private company, um, who we say are, are involved in disability, disability denial. Um, the uh, testing uh, has been found to be completely uh, unfit for purpose, according to Citizens Advice Scotland, and uh, the Harrington report, uh, which was accepted, in, whose recommendations was uh, accepted in full um, back in the autumn, uh, highlighted all of these things. Uh, the government said that they would uh, take all the points that Professor Harrington said. Yet in April this year, they're going to be uh, rolling out. Uh, uh, they're going to reassess people at 10,000 people a week in the UK under the old system. This is going to cause untold hardship and this is 
something that must be stopped. I'm uh, Robbie Campbell and I represent Scotia Clubhouse in Glasgow, which is a mental health uh, organisation. I think a lot of people with mental health problems are going to be back in hospital or some, you know, the, uh, there was something on about people being suicidal. A lot of people are going to um, be back in hospital. The use of, you know, using resources that needn't be used if the, benef you know, if the benefit system was not being reformed and was better. And um, just to say in conclusion, Charles Dickens would be turning in his grave if you could see the spirit of the workhouse being purported in the 21st century. My name is Lucy Rich. I work with Independent Living in Scotland and several other disability rights organisations. I believe that the, the, these benefits and services cuts uh, which are our community face are among the greatest threats to be, uh, basic human, human rights and liberty that this country has seen in many years. Ian Duncan Smith has, said, has uh, been heard to utter a basic variation on the words if you've nothing to hide then you've nothing to be afraid of. We've all heard words like that before and we know what they mean. The, I believe that this government thinks that disability is a safe place for them to cut without suffering a major reaction or consequences. If we work together, inspire each other and help each other, then I th believe that, that before long we will be able to prove them very wrong, very wrong indeed. <laughs>